Filigree glass is a highly advanced form of glass making. The artists first produce threads of colored glass, then weave these threads together in intricate patterns, encasing them within clear crystal. Complex glass making techniques shape these patterned rods into breathtaking works of art. The filigree glass technique was invented in the 1500s by master glassmakers in Murano, Italy. Their then secret process incorporated ancient methods from Mesopotamia, the birthplace of glassmaking some 2000 years earlier. It all begins with a blend of mostly silica sand, soda ash and lime. They heat the mix to 1300 degrees Celsius, melting it over several hours into lead-free liquid crystal. With a steel rod called a punti, the glassmakers roll some molten crystal on a metal table as it cools and solidifies, a shaping technique known as marvering. Then they use the post they've shaped to pick up a piece of densely colored glass called a color bar. They melt the color on the end of the crystal post. At the same time, they heat another color bar into a molten state. Then they perform a process called overlaying. They push the molten colored glass over the other color bar, then marver until the colored glass symmetrically encases it. They encase the color in clear crystal and reheat some more, then prepare a new bit of clear crystal on another panty. They use it to grab the free end of the color overlay. The glassmakers pull stretching the crystal like taffy into what's known as overlaid cane, a thin rod of crystal with a thread of colored glass inside. It takes tremendous expertise to stretch the rapidly cooling glass to a consistent diameter without twisting or breaking it in the process. They snip the long cane into manageable lengths. Next, they cut the colored rods into the size required. Lay out the rods in a precise configuration, heat, then roll them onto a precisely sized piece of molten clear crystal. Now they repeat the pulling process, but this time, to create the internal pattern they want, they twist both punties. They use an electric drill to ensure steady, uniform revolutions. The rod this creates is called a complex cane. After it cools and stabilizes overnight, they cut it into the lengths they need to create the filigree glass piece. The colors and pattern inside a complex cane are determined by the choice and layout of the overlaid cane rods rolled onto the molten crystal. The filigree pattern is now determined by the way in which they lay out the complex cane rods. After fusing the laid out rods, they wrap them around a collar of hot crystal at the end of a blowpipe. While rolling the piece on a glass blowing bench, they use a scissor like tool called jacks to close off the end. They snip off the excess with shears. Then they roll the hot glass on a wet wood block to smooth and round the bubble. They blow in some air to produce the shape of a pear, stick a punty to the bottom of the pear, then use cold tweezers to shock the hot glass into breaking along the separation line and transfer off the blowpipe. Now they take some hot crystal from the furnace and roll it in fine granulated colored glass. They reheat to melt the color into the crystal. Then attach a bit of glass to the top of the pear to form into a stem. They smooth the cut off edge with a small torch. They take another bit of molten colored crystal to shape a leaf. This crimping tool imprints the veins. Every filigree piece these Canadian master glassmakers create is signed by way of a piece of cane bearing their initials. They fuse it to the piece in a discreet location. Now the finishing touches. Reheating, then some shape tweaking with tools and wet newspaper. With the artist's work done, it's time to enjoy the spectacular fruits of their labor.